Welcome to the design and layout instructional video. This video will review the do's and don'ts of designing and laying out a street print project with an emphasis on projects that are highly productive to install. Design and layout are two individual components of the street print process that impact all other phases of productivity. It is important to remember that when designing a street print project, the more complex you make the design, the less productive the installation will be. The factors to consider in the design process include pattern orientation or sight lines, borders, accents, obstacles, and colors. The first factor to consider when designing your project is pattern orientation. Pattern orientation establishes what direction the template should be installed. The best way to do this is to coordinate sight lines with the project's most common direction of travel. Sight lines are lines that the eye is drawn to within the pattern, created by symmetrical repetition of grout lines in most templates. There are two types of sight lines, solid and broken. Solid sight lines are created by long, solid runs of wire, while broken sight lines are created by a pattern of repeating short runs of wire. Most patterns have sight lines in multiple directions and can contain both broken and solid lines. Offset brick, for example, has sight lines in multiple directions. It contains broken sight lines in one direction and solid in the other. Similar to offset brick, diagonal herringbone also has sight lines in multiple directions, but contains only broken sight lines. Always avoid aligning solid sight lines with the most common direction of travel, as this can create wavy lines. Instead, align the broken sight lines with the most common direction of travel. Borders play an important role in many street print projects because of the versatility they provide. By using either a straight border or flexible border, you can close off a pattern and change the orientation of a pattern. Straight borders are exactly what the name entails. Narrow, straight patterns that are generally one or two bricks wide. All straight borders are closed patterns. Flexible borders are exactly the same as straight borders with one exception. They are not closed patterns. Flexible border templates are designed with one open-ended side which gives them the ability to flex and bend to create an infinite number of curves and custom designs. The flexible nature of these templates requires more care and time during installation. When designing a street print project, it's crucial to ensure that all patterns are closed. Closing a pattern means making sure the entire perimeter of the project is encircled by a border, solid grout line, curbing, or landscaping. Closing a pattern creates a more realistic look, making all the bricks appear to have been cut. Closing also helps during the coating process by providing a solid grout line or edge to mask off and coat. Beware of specific structures and landscaping that appear to close a pattern but are actually just obstacles, like chain link fence. Anytime you design a pattern that separates to encompass a large obstacle and then meets back up with itself, you must include a border to avoid pattern misalignment. It is also recommended to include the same border on the opposite side of the obstacle to maintain symmetry in your design. Accents are unique patterns that can be incorporated with the main design or installed individually. Some accents are standard templates available in our inventory, while others are created using a combination of flexible borders, standard templates, and color. Projects that use accent templates only are the most cost effective. By installing an accent alone, street print will fit into anyone's budget. Projects that combine accents with the main template lower productivity because of the required tie-in. Tie-in refers to the accent being installed before the main pattern. Then, installing the main pattern around the accent without actually connecting all the grout lines to prevent double stamping. Once the main pattern is stamped, each individual grout line on the main pattern is tied into the accent using a hand tool or finishing bit, which can be very time consuming. Accenting with color is also an option for street print designs. The basic idea is to design a project using standard templates and then during the coding process create an accent using masking and color variations. But remember, each accent requires more colors, which means more mixing, more masking, and more cleaning. Obstacles are an important factor to consider when designing a street print project. There are many obstacles that can complicate the installation process 
and lower productivity, like large planters, drinking fountains, and parking meters. If your project includes obstacles, it's important to incorporate those obstacles into your design so you're aware of the effects they will have on productivity during installation. A common option for dealing with obstacles is to work around them using a border. After you've selected your main pattern and how you want to close your pattern, the next step in the design process is color selection. Street print projects can be designed using a wide variety of colors. The benefit of using colors include creating an original design, highlighting accents and borders, and creating a look of complexity. An important factor to remember when choosing your color scheme is the effect it will have on installation productivity. Using a single color will maximize your productivity on the job. If you decide to use multiple colors, each additional color requires additional masking, additional cleaning, additional mixing, and additional dry time. Designing a street print project has infinite possibilities with varying levels of complexity. With so many options for design, it's very easy to lose sight of the main objective, which is to create a design that is both aesthetically pleasing and productive to install. So far we've covered the main objective to designing a street print project, which is creating an aesthetically pleasing project that is also productive to install. We also looked at what factors to consider, which include pattern orientation, borders, accents, obstacles, and colors. In this layout section, we will be reviewing the primary objectives of the layout process. We will also cover how to use layout tools, which includes using rope, establishing the center line, using the 345 method, creating parallel lines, creating both straight and flexible border lines, and marking accent lines. The primary objective for layout is to ensure the lines on the project coordinate with those on the design and to ensure that all the lines are straight and square. You will require the following tools to lay out the project on the job site. Measuring tape or tape reel, road marking paint, 3 8 or 9 millimeter rope, marking crayon or chalk, design template, and design diagram. We recommend using road marking paint and 3 8 rope to create layout lines first because it's exactly the same size as the wire rope used to construct the templates and second because paint is more visible than chalk lines which can tend to burn away during the heating process. Using rope requires three crew members, one crew member at each end making sure it's aligned correctly with the measurements and that there's constant tension on the rope. If there's any slack in the rope while marking the entire project can be misaligned. The third crew member applies the road marking paint once the rope is secured in the right place. We recommend starting the layout process by establishing the center of the project. Having a center line on the project makes it easy to coordinate template sight lines and to ensure the project is aligned properly. When establishing the center line you have two options. If your project is symmetrical, you can measure the width of the project, then divide in half to find the center or if the project isn't symmetrical you can use one straight side of the project to create a perpendicular line which will serve as your center line. You can create a perpendicular line using either a laser square, T-square, or the 345 method. To create a perpendicular line using the 345 method start by marking along one straight edge where you want the perpendicular line to be. Now measure three feet on either side of that mark. Next, measure four feet perpendicular from the original mark and make a small arch. Next, measure five feet from each three foot mark and create small arches that intersect the first small arch. Circle a point where all the arches intersect. Now you have your reference points for the perpendicular line. For large projects, simply increase the measurements by multiples of themselves, then follow the same process. Now that you've marked the center of your project, 
you will need additional lines that run parallel with your center line to coordinate the main template with. To mark the parallel lines, you will need to measure where the pattern repeats on your main template. Use that measurement to make reference points parallel to the center line, and then mark a line. Repeat this process making enough parallel lines to span the entire project. Once your layout lines are complete, it's useful to make reference marks directly on the template to aid in template placement. We recommend making two reference lines, one that coordinates with the center line and the other that coordinates with the parallel lines. Border lines. There are two types of borders, straight or flexible, and both require layout lines. All straight borders should be aligned with the surrounding pattern or coordinated with the center line, then marked using rope and marking paint to ensure they're straight. For projects that include flexible borders, layout can become more complex. The most important factor to remember when using a flexible border is that the open edge must be kept on the inside of any bend to prevent creating oversized bricks. The simplest way to mark your flexible border is to have two crew members hold the border in place with the desired curve and have a third crew member spray it while it's in place. Repeat this process until the entire curve is laid out. For any border being installed around the perimeter of a project, always mark layout lines where the inside edge of the project will end up to avoid overspray outside the project. By starting at the outer perimeter of the project, then measuring the width of the border inward, you can make reference marks where the inside edge will be. To lay out an accent, start by creating a center line wherever the accent is going to be placed. Once you've established your center line, mark a perpendicular line that intersects it. Once both lines have been marked, creating a cross, center the accent template on the cross and mark several of the interior grout lines to reference during stamping. We have now reviewed the key factors for designing a quality street print project that will yield the most productive installation and aesthetically pleasing finish. Pattern orientation, borders, colors, accents, and obstacles are the key factors to remember during the design process. The key factors to remember during the layout process include coordinating layout lines with the design and keeping layout lines straight and square. Lastly, we reviewed using the layout tools, which includes using rope, establishing the center line, using the 345 method, creating parallel lines, creating both straight and flexible border lines, and marking accent lines.